Hey guys, I'm Chris, game developer from Germany, and my debut indie game celebrated its first birthday. Clio A Pirate's Tale is a solo developed retro pixel art pirate adventure inspired by the old Zelda games and the classic LucasArts adventure games. And it was released on Steam and GOG.com for Windows and Mac on December 12, 2021, and on the Nintendo Switch in August 2022. Since this was the first game I've written, developed and published, the past few years have been very exciting for me. And even though I've already shared a lot about the development process on social media, there is still a lot of behind the scenes material that hasn't been published. <laughs> It's bad. I had almost no prior experience in the field when I started the project and I was happy about every shared experience and good advice I could find on the internet. So in this video let's travel quickly through the last four years. Starting with the phase in which the idea for Clio was born, the build up of the Kickstarter campaign and the first demo, the Kickstarter campaign itself, the full time development of the game until its release. And finally, I'd like to give you an insight into the sales figures of the first year. So without further ado, let's get started with phase one, the idea and software. The vague idea to develop my own game has been in my head for a long time, but I started to really focus on this idea in 2019. I watched a ton of YouTube tutorials and learned the game engine Unity and the programming language C Sharp. And at the same time, I was exploring different story ideas and learning the basics of storytelling. Then I started working on the first script draft of Clio, drew some concept art and designed a few characters. And when the setting and the rough idea for the story was fixed, I produced a short teaser and created accounts on Instagram and Twitter and posted it, with the goal to build up a small community that is interested in the project. Until November, I was exploring different game mechanics and different software to figure out early on which programs I wanted to learn and use to develop the entire game. And this is the selection. I chose to stick with Unity because I liked working with it and it seemed approachable to me. And I decided not to use any external asset packs or plugins. On the one hand because I wanted to do as much as possible in this project on my own so I could learn as much as possible, but also because assets and plugins sometimes install a lot of weird stuff inside of a Unity project that I don't understand and I simply was afraid of losing the overview. A major exception was FMOD. FMOD was implemented in the Unity project and I used it to manage and control all the sound files in the game and I highly recommend it. I found it to be very clear and logical and just fun to work with. Especially adaptive music can be implemented very easily. That means that different music tracks can seamlessly transition depending on the situation in the game. For example in this scene, when Clio enters the kitchen, the instrumentation of the track changes slightly. The same applies to sound effects, like in this example when Clio walks over different types of surfaces and the sound of the footsteps changes accordingly. Let's stay in the area of sound, next software I used a lot was Logic. Almost all the music in the game was produced using virtual instruments in Logic Pro X. I've never composed a soundtrack before, so it was a lot of trial and error, but working with MIDI is great, even if you don't know what you're doing. You can just move the notes around, change the instruments and effects until it sounds good to you. Here for example is a very early project where I figured out how the main theme could sound. As you see, I played around with the notes, the speed, the instruments, there even is a pretty wild banjo style section in it. So the theme changed a lot from day to day, but you can still hear the melody from this early take in the final version. And the last software I used for creating the sound of Clio was Adobe Audition. And I used it for recording and editing sound effects and later the voiceover files and things like that, because it made it easy to set markers in the track and use those to export multiple MP3s at once. For coding I used Visual Studio. Unfortunately I can't say much about the program because I really only used it to type the code. And I was happy that it automatically gave me suggestions on what to type next. But the program seems to be much more complex, I only scratched the surface here. For the artwork and animation I used a variety of applications and programs. Let's start with Procreate on the iPad. It's fantastic. 
It's not originally meant to draw pixel art, but it works really well if you make yourself a custom brush for it. Almost all the artwork for the game was made with Procreate. Most of the time, when I was happy with the artwork, the next software it went into was Acebrite, which is a great pixel art animation software. It is quite intuitive and you can export sprite sheets of your animation that are perfect to work with later in Unity. For more complex animations, I used an additional application for the iPad called Rough Animator, and it's good to do exactly that. A rough, early pass of an animation. It's great to find the right timing and to define the basic shapes and so on. The exported rough animation pass was then used as a guide layer in Acebrite to create the final animation and sprite sheet. And sometimes I used Adobe After Effects for animation as well and took advantage of its compositing features, animated masks and the puppet tool for example, to realize some of the smoother animations. And last but not least, of course, I also used Photoshop for everything that you would do with Photoshop. I think this is a piece of software that needs no further explanation, at least in this video. And that's it. These are all the programs with which the entire game was made. As soon as I was sure about what I wanted to create and which programs I would use for it, I started the actual development of the first demo and decided at that point to prepare a Kickstarter campaign. This phase took me about 6 months, until May 2020. In this time I came up with the rewards for Kickstarter and designed them, including the retro code wheel and of course the most important reward for the campaign which was the Kraken for a card game. I produced the campaign video and set up the campaign page on Kickstarter and of course I developed the first playable demo of Cleo which was about 45 minutes long. And on May 5th 2020 the Kickstarter campaign as well as the demo went live. The campaign went for 30 days and the funding goal was 20,000 euros and the initial release date was supposed to be August 2021. Spoiler alert, the campaign was successful and spoiler alert, I didn't manage to finish the game until August 2021. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and take a look at how the campaign went. After day 1 the project was 22% funded and on day 15, halfway through the campaign, the funding was at 86%. Two days later, the number of supporters kind of boosted a bit as the demo was discovered and played by a number of German streamers, which led to this magical moment when I was able to be part of the Twitch chat of the community that had the Kickstarter campaign cross the finish line on May 20th. The campaign ended at 185% of the funding goal and raised a total of 37,067 euros, which meant that the stretch goal for a full voice acting in English and German was also cracked. And I didn't expect that to be realistic at all before I started the campaign. I'd now like to give you a brief overview of how the Kickstarter money was spent. From the 36,000 euros, about 9,000 euros had to be paid for the Kickstarter cut and various fees and taxes. About 6,000 euros was spent on the creation of the physical rewards. The card decks, flash drives, wooden boxes, code wheels, stickers and so on. The shipping costs for the physical rewards ended up at about 3,500 euros, including all the packaging material. The cost for all German and English voice actors added up to about 9,500 euros. And this is a sad chapter of the story, I paid 3,000 euros for a professional translation of the German script into English. Unfortunately, the company that did it was an absolute disaster and the translation was actually completely worthless. It was almost impossible for me to take legal actions against an American company, so I had to check it off as a huge mistake and make a new translation myself with the help of a friend of mine. Nevertheless, this money belongs into this chart as it unfortunately was spent on this mistake. So, in the end I was left with about 5000 euros of the total amount to use for myself. Of course, that's not enough to stay afloat for more than a year and that's why I saved up a financial buffer before the campaign because I knew that a large part of the crowdfunding money would actually go directly back into the campaign or be spent elsewhere for the development. All in all, the campaign worked out very well. In the end I had over 1100 backers who would now follow the project closely. I had attracted attention to my game and funded a complete voice acting in two languages. There's not much I would do differently if I were to do another crowdfunding campaign except for one thing. I would simplify the different supporter levels a lot. There were 11 different levels to choose from, two of them with an early bird discount option and no matter which package you had, for 6 euros extra you could get a second game key on top. That resulted in 26 different package combinations in the end and for each key the backers could choose between GOG and Steam. Accordingly, it was very difficult to keep track of all that for over 1100 supporters in the end when it was time to send the packages and the keys. But we are already too far again, back to June 2020 when I could start with a full-time development of Clio. I threw myself headlong into the project, trying to set up a good schedule for the coming month and a good workflow as quickly as possible. Always on the first of each month I posted a development update on Kickstarter and let my backers know about the progress. And I can highly recommend this, because the backers have been very positive about it and they motivated me for the next month with lovely comments after each update. 
On July 13th, 2020, I published the store page for Clio on Steam and I probably should have taken care of this even earlier. I guess collecting wishlists as early as possible is one of the most important things you can do for your own game as an indie developer. This is how the number of wishlists on Steam has evolved over the time of development. One week before release, Clio had about 8,000 wishlists. On February 27th, 2021, the complete game logic of the game was done. A lot of the music, sound effects, cutscenes and all the voice acting was of course still missing, but I was able to get a feel for the whole project for the very first time. And my girlfriend Nikki and I did a lot of playthroughs at this time to balance the game. And that's when Nikki and I decided to make some sort of dummy voice acting of all the characters in the game ourselves, just to be able to test exactly how I could work best with the voice actor's audio files later and to have a fully voiced dummy version for playtesting. This dummy voice acting was done in April and I'm very glad I've made this decision because it made me realize early on how much work it was going to be to edit all the takes of all the voice actors in two languages. So I made the decision to officially move the release date from August to December. I informed the Kickstarter backers about it on May 1st and published a release date teaser on June 1st. On June 12th came another very important moment for me. The first playtesting of Clio with friends. Up until this point, no one but Nikki and me had been able to play the entire game. It was the very first time that I could see how the whole story would be received and I was incredibly nervous. Fortunately, everything went very well. The balancing of some puzzles needed some adjustments, but other than that, the first playtesting was a great success and a big relief for me. Over the next few weeks, there were more playtesting sessions and I started to prepare everything for the production of the final voice acting. Around that time, I was told that I could be at the following Gamescom at the Indie Arena booth with Clio. The Indie Arena booth 2021 took place exclusively online and therefore it was especially important for me to be able to present a good, updated demo. That's why I first took care of the voice acting of all the characters that are part of the first 45 minutes of the game. I made the first casting call on July 15th on Twitter and Instagram. I prepared a PDF for both languages in which all the seven characters that are part of the demo were listed, each with a short description and auditioning lines. In response, I received 443 mails with 1227 MP3s and almost 10 hours of auditioning takes. That was absolutely mind-blowing for me. Accordingly, I spent the next few days listening to all the entries and making a selection. Since all the recordings had to be made in the voice actor's home studio, the selected voice actors then received a detailed data package from me. First, a PDF for each scene in which the character had dialogue, and also gameplay footage of the according moments in the game so that they could get a good idea of the particular scene. Each voice actor recorded his part of the dialogue alone, each in their own studio with their own equipment. I was very worried about whether I would be able to edit the many different audio files so that everything would fit together well. But in the end, it worked out great. My cast did an awesome job and I'm super proud of the performance of all the voice actors. Especially because there were absolute beginners as well as very professional voice actors in the cast. And everything fits together perfectly in both the English and German version. Everyone did a great job on this. It was close, but I managed to have the new demo ready for Gamescom and the Indie Arena booth Digital 2021. It was a great experience and a lot of fun to walk around the digital exhibition and to interact with the visitors. In the end, the event generated a little over 1000 wishlists on Steam. So events like this are definitely very valuable for indie developers. After the event, I took care of the second casting call for the rest of all the characters, which resulted in about 16 and a half hours of auditioning lines being sent in. Parallel on making the selection for the final cast, I worked on a lot of bug fixes. In October, I was able to participate in the Steam Next Fest event with the new demo of Cleo. Again, this resulted in a boost of more than 1000 wishlists. And then the very crazy final phase of the full-time development started. The packing and shipping of the Kickstarter rewards. It was fun and a welcome change after all the programming work, but it was crazy. Nikki and I were packing, labeling and taking packages to the post office all day for weeks. And in the end our apartment was an absolute mess, but it was worth it. Seeing on social media channels how the packages arrived all over the world was a very, very good feeling. At this time, however, I also made a very big mistake. I was so busy taking care of the release and the shipping that I forgot to send review keys to the press. I caught up on that after the release, but I think that's already too late for many game magazines to cover it. That may be the reason why there are not many reviews about Clio on the internet today. About a week before release, I noticed a strong wishlist boost of about 2000. Clio was listed under popular upcoming on Steam and thus got a lot of visibility. And then, almost exactly when I got 10k wishlists total, the time finally came. Release day. December 12th, 2021. An absolute crazy moment for me that I can't really describe. I was relieved, proud, excited, anxious, tired, happy. 
And it's a strange feeling that after the moment you press the release button, there's not much you can do except wait. And now let's jump into the last chapter of this video, first year figures. For the purpose of better clarity, I'm only going to talk about Steam's numbers in this video. Steam, however, has by far the biggest impact on my revenue of about 80%. The rest is distributed among other revenue sources. I think it makes sense to uncover the entire sales curve up front and then take a closer look at some details. So this is it. To this date, Clio sold 9,533 copies and made a growth revenue of 79,798 US dollars on Steam. After the 30% Steam cut and after deducting all taxes and converting US dollar to Euro, the final amount actually received in the bank account is 40,784 Euros. This is not really the final amount that will actually arrive at my personal bank account as a private person, since taxes will again be occurred on the final payout, but that would make it too complicated now, so let's work with this number. As you can see, the sales curve looks more like a staircase than an actual curve, and that starts to make sense when I highlight the time periods when the game was discounted on Steam. But there are two places where you can see an additional increase in sales. The first increase comes from a famous content creator from Germany, Funk, he played the whole game on December 18th on a Twitch stream with over 6,000 viewers. I can't put into words how terribly nervous I was at night and I was so relieved that he and his community enjoyed the game so much. The second boost came from another very, very famous content creator from Germany, Gronk. He published a two-week Let's Play of Clio on YouTube and I am incredibly proud and grateful for that. I've been watching Gronk's Let's Play videos myself for many many years and then to see my own game on his channel has just been incredible for me. Gronk's Clio Let's Play videos have up to 140,000 views on YouTube. Just unbelievable and definitely visible in the sales curve as you can see. I'm incredibly happy with these results. Clio is my first game and I started this project with almost zero knowledge of game design and no established community. I'm just so grateful for how many people have embraced the project so warmly up to this point. Over the entire year, Clio has received a total of 442 reviews on Steam. Only three of them are negative. This again is mind-blowing to me. Thank you so much everyone who gave Clio a positive review. Unfortunately, only 362 of all the reviews count on the Steam statistics, since reviews from people who activated the game via a key are not included. So if you own the game on Steam, please consider writing a short review. It really helps the project a lot. On March 31st, 2022, I was nominated for Best Debut at the Deutsche Computerspielpreis, the German Computer Game Awards. This was a great honor for me and also a great relief financially, because already being nominated was rewarded with a prize money of 25,000 euros. I was nominated together with the two indie games A Juggler's Tale and White Shadows. The latter won the prize at night. Be sure to check out those games as well and once again thank you to the jury of the German Computer Game Awards for the nomination. Over the next few months I worked on the Nintendo Switch version of Clio and released it on the Nintendo eShop on August 10th. Later this year I was once again nominated for an award, this time the Deutsche Entwicklerpreis, the German Developer Awards, and the category Best Story. The award ceremony was only a few days ago and again it was a huge honor for me to be nominated. Congratulations also to the co-nominated indie game The Fermi Paradox and the winner of the award Beholder 3. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you so much everybody for checking out this video, for supporting Clio, for just everything you guys did for this project and for me in the last years. If you would like to continue supporting the project, there are many ways to do so. Obviously you can buy the game on Steam, GOG or the Nintendo eShop, maybe as a Christmas gift for friends or family. You can leave a review for the game on Steam or GOG and it hasn't to be long at all. You can follow my developer page on Steam, you can share this video, or just tell everyone you randomly meet in the streets that Clio A Private Style is the best game in the world. And oh wait, what's this? You might want to keep an eye on my social media accounts on Twitter, Instagram and TikTok early next year. Maybe there will be an announcement teaser for a new game. Thank you.